Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the anatomy and function of the pectoralis major muscle. So we'll be looking at its general structure, its divisions, and then also its origins, insertions, innervations, blood supply, and actions. Now, this muscle right here that you can see, this is pectoralis major. And if we're looking at it, we can see that it's actually divided into two separate parts. There's a part here that's actually going to originate off of the clavicle, and so it's aptly named the clavicular head. This is the most superior part of the pectoralis major. The largest part is located beneath the clavicular head here in this maroon color, and this is what's often called the sternal head or the sternocostal head. Okay. This part of the muscle is actually going to be originating off of the sternum. We'll see this in a couple minutes on a three-dimensional model. It'll originate off of the nubrium of the sternum and the sternal body, and then also the upper six costal cartilages, and then partially off of the external oblique aponeurosis. Okay. Um, there's also another head that's sometimes talked about. It would be roughly right here. It's beneath the sternocostal head, or the sternal head, and it's called the abdominal head. The abdominal head actually completely originates off of one of the uh, costal cartilages and the associated rib. And for that reason, it's sometimes just called the costal head. But there is an abdominal head down here that's not labeled. Um, I wrote up here that it's a two-headed shoulder lateral flexor because the major action that we normally think of with pectoralis major is shoulder lateral flexion. And generally, we think of two major heads. There's the clavicular head and the sternocostal head, but sometimes you'll hear the abdominal head referred to. So we'll look at the three-dimensional models in just a minute, but let's take a look at the origin, insertion, innervation, and blood supply, and then the action we'll save for the next slide. So when we're talking about the clavicular head, the origin is really just on the anterior half of the medial aspect of the clavicle. So the clavicle is, of course, right here. We can even see the deltoid muscle right here that's originating partly on the clavicle. Of course, its origin is going to span posteriorly even more on the scapula as well. But here's the clavicular head originating off of the clavicle. Down here, the sternocostal head, I've kind of already mentioned this, but it's going to originate on the sternum, both the manubrium and the body of the sternum. Now, in terms of the origins on the ribs and the costal cartilages, you can't see those. In fact, the pectoralis major, its sternocostal head, actually has superficial origins and deep origins. The superficial ones, which you can see here, are on the sternum's manubrium and its body. If we were to look underneath those, we would see origins on the upper six costal cartilages, their associated ribs, and then also down here, this would actually be more superficial, uh, the external oblique aponeurosis. So keep in mind that it has some of its origins superficially, and then the others are deep. Now, regardless of which head we're talking about, clavicular head, sternocostal head, or even the abdominal head, all three parts are going to insert on the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove of the humerus. Again, the three-dimensional model on the next slide will clear this up. But remember that the humerus anteriorly has a groove uh, that really exists starting between the greater and lesser tubercles, and it's called the intertubercular groove. And as you go uh, distally down the humerus, that uh, groove is going to have lips on either side. There's a medial lip and a lateral lip. The lateral lip is where the insertion of pectoralis major is. I'll allude to this now, but we'll go back and look at it later. It turns out the medial lip is going to be the insertion for latissimus dorsi and teres major. So that's the insertion of pectoralis major. Now in terms of the blood supply, the blood supply is mainly through the pectoral branch of the thoracoacromial trunk, and then the innervation is via the lateral and medial pectoral nerves. Now these nerves kind of a misnomer when you're looking at them in the context of the muscle. The lateral pectoral nerve actually innervates more of the medial part of the muscle, and the medial pectoral nerve innervates mostly the lateral part of the muscle. The reason why they're named as such is because they're named for which cord of the brachial plexus they come off of. The lateral pectoral nerve originates from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus, whereas the medial pectoral nerve originates from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. We're going to have a video fairly soon over the brachial plexus, and so I encourage you to go watch that to find out more information about these nerves. 
All right, so now uh, let's actually take a look at the three-dimensional models and hopefully get a better understanding of the origins, insertions, and so forth. And then we'll go look at the actions. Here's a three-dimensional model of the pectoralis major. And you can see over here, this would be the patient's right pectoralis major muscle. Here's the left pectoralis major muscle. And the only thing I really wanted to show you with this picture is you can actually see pretty well the three different parts of the pectoralis major muscle. Up here at the top, you can see the clavicular head of the muscle. And again, it's the clavicular head because you can see its origin is entirely off of the clavicle. And then here you can see the much larger sternocostal head of the pectoralis major. You can see part of its origin on the sternum's manubrium, the body of the sternum, also down here on this aponeurosis right here. And then underneath this, which I'll show you in a couple minutes, you'd be able to see the origins off of some of the costal cartilages. So we'll see that in a minute. And then the other thing that's nice in this image that you can see is you can actually see the abdominal head of the pectoralis major, which is underneath the sternocostal head. Uh, this is something that we often forget. Now, when you look at these on a cadaver in real life, they would not be discrete like this from one another with easily defined uh, separations. But the idea here is just to show you that you have a clavicular part, a sternocostal part, and then a much smaller abdominal part uh, that's most inferior. So hopefully that makes sense. Now here's a model that's going to show something very similar, but with one added feature. So again, here, number one, we have the clavicular head of pectoralis major. This large one is the sternocostal head. Okay? And then down here, sometimes they'll refer to this as the costal head because it's just coming off the costal cartilages, but this is really the abdominal head of the pectoralis major muscle. And you can see here that all three parts, regardless, are going to come over and they're going to insert on the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove. The medial lip, which would be underneath this muscle, you can't see it, that would be the insertion of latissimus dorsi and teres major. But remember these insert on the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove. Now on this side of the picture, what's nice is you can actually see where the specific origins are from. So this one right here, number four, this is clearly the origin of the clavicular head because it originates completely off of the clavicle. Now down here, going down the manubrium of the sternum and the body of the sternum, and then on these costal cartilages right here, uh, this is going to be where you have the origins of the sternocostal head. And then this one labeled as number seven, this is actually where the origin of the abdominal head, sometimes just called the costal head. The reason it's called the costal head is because it originates completely off of the costal cartilage and the associated rib. Okay, but I've often called it abdominal head. And then this right here, number eight, that's actually going to be the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove where all three parts of the pectoralis major insert. So hopefully that makes sense. So now that we've taken a look at these 3D models, let's take another look at the pectoralis major and talk a little bit more about its actions. Okay? So again, in this picture right here, we can see uh, the three parts of pectoralis major. Here's the clavicular head most superiorly, originating off of the clavicle. Here's the sternocostal head, and then we've got this abdominal head, which will actually be down here. Um, again, it's going to be the smallest part. Now again, regardless of the origin going around here, again, notice they're all inserting on that lateral lip of the intertubercular groove of the humerus. Now what's interesting about the pectoralis major, this is something to keep in mind, if we're looking at a part of it that actually originates most superiorly, the insertion is actually going to be more inferior on that lateral lip. Notice that the clavicular head, at least the fibers coming from that, insert more inferiorly, or we really should say distally, down the humerus. Whereas the parts of the, that originate more inferiorly, so the abdominal head and then also inferior parts of the sternocostal head, they insert a little bit more superiorly on that lateral lip. So there's going to be a crossing of those fibers as they insert on the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove. Okay. One other thing I wanted to mention before we go into the actions is that when you look at these uh, regions of the pectoralis major on a cadaver, uh, they're not going to be discrete like this. They're not really going to have this separation. The naming of the clavicular head or the sternocostal head is really just done as a convenience so that we can talk about different parts because they originate off of different regions. 
But when you look at this in a cadaver, they're not discrete like this. They're really all just fused together. This is really just for convenience. All right, so now for the actions of pectoralis major. I mentioned it's a shoulder lateral flexor. Lateral flexion is really going to be uh, the major function of pectoralis major, at least normally what we think of. So when you're performing a bench press in the gym or pectoral flies with dumbbells or a machine, you're performing a lateral flexion, whether you realize it or not. And that's why they're good exercises to stress the pectoralis major. Now, in general, the actions of the pectoralis major are going to be shoulder flexion, shoulder lateral flexion, a little bit of adduction, adduction, and then it's going to facilitate medial rotation. But we can break this down by looking at the two different heads here. We're going to neglect the abdominal head. So the clavicular head, that's the part closest to the deltoid muscle. Okay? Again, it's going to originate off the clavicle. This part specifically is going to be good at facilitating shoulder flexion. And if the shoulder angle is at 110 degrees, it'll have some degree of shoulder adduction. Okay? But the major function of the clavicular head is going to be shoulder flexion. Now when we move to the sternocostal head, the major functions here are going to be shoulder lateral flexion. So when you're working the bench press or dumbbell flies, you're going to be doing lateral flexion there. That's going to majorly stress the sternocostal head of the pectoralis major. And then also internal or medial rotation. I have medial here, internal, same thing. It's going to facilitate internal rotation. One application of internal rotation is arm wrestling. If you've ever arm wrestled, the actual motion you're attempting to do is internal rotation. So when people often arm wrestle, you can obviously see their biceps brachii, but in reality, one of the muscles that needs to be especially strong to win in arm wrestling is actually the pectoralis major, because if it's a very powerful assistance in internal rotation. Again, remember subscapularis, the rotator cuff muscle, also facilitates internal rotation. Depending on the fibers, you can have a little bit of shoulder extension facilitated by the sternocostal head, but the major two functions we're going to be seeing are, are lateral flexion and internal rotation. One thing I want to mention about lateral flexion, you may see it written as horizontal adduction. Uh, I actually prefer the term lateral flexion because it makes much more sense to me. It's flexion of the shoulder, but it occurs in the horizontal plane. It's lateral. But in any case, hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the pectoralis major muscle. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.